Oh, that was a knife. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Kyoto Figure Complex Amazing Yamaguchi powered by Revel Tech Deadpool version 2.0, X-Force color version. I haven't gotten the last few releases from Amazing Yamaguchi. One, <laughs> you gotta cut back on spending somewhere. And two, like I always say, there is a frustration level with this line. So Robo, why'd you get this one? It's Deadpool. I had a lot of fun with version one. I wanted to give version two a test drive. Then they offered it in X-Force flavor and I had to jump on it. I never got that variation with version one. They got me, that's the bottom line, okay? Looking at the package, the artwork, the layout, everything is just as crazy as the poses you could get the figure in. It's hard to see what's going on. Everything's covered in plastic on the inside of the package. There's stuff hidden behind the graphic, but even the artwork, it's, a pretty promotional picture over the top of comic art that spans around to this side and this side and it's behind everything and it gets jumbled. Well, okay, a lot. This artwork doesn't span around this side. Is that the Eiffel Tower in the background? Smell you later. On the back, look at this jumbled mess. Just pfft. Advantage, Deadpool. Hiya! Would you just relax? Out of the way, nerd. Yep. What? Scratch. On the other side, there's that artwork. Well, no, that's not going around either. I'm just a complete liar. There's the artwork coming around. I'm the insufferable Deadpool. On the bottom, yet more artwork. UPC warnings, your winning lottery number. Let's get this open, see what happens. A lot of the stuff has fallen out of the tray. It was a rough ride from overseas, I guess. Tray? There's even stuff falling out the back. Got some extra joints in there, that's always good. What do we got on the background? Ooh, that's nifty. Again, <laughs> look at just the mayhem. And then artwork on the flap, of course. I forgot all about that. Yep, sure, yeah, whatever. There's that, another comic panel. Swapping heads, neck piece, swapping out the eyes. Pouches are removable this time. Mm -hmm. Knife goes in sheath. Gun goes in holster, sword goes in sheath. Swapping out the hands, which weapons go with which hand. Swords on the back, stand, pose. Before actually getting into the nitty gritty, I wanted to see right out of the package how it would do in a neutral stance. And honestly, this isn't bad compared to other amazing Yamaguchi figures. I mean, just bringing in the first one, you can tell there's been some evolution to this line. And I think that's why they're coming back around to Deadpool. It's like, hey, remember the first one? It's all kind of, we wanted to try again and here you go there's still articulation poking out and some gaps here and there which is the whole point of this line yeah there's some difference well there's some major differences there's nothing about this figure that is this figure at all i don't know the aesthetic overall it reminds me well x-force in general reminds me of a more modern day deadpool even though that's been a few years ago you know what i mean the sculpt for the straps crisscross in the back and then go up on these articulation points that we've seen with newer amazing yamaguchi figures where it can rotate forward and back but because it's part of the straps it seems a bit more natural here it's not just just a chunk of the body moving back and forth that's breaking the lines and stuff it's slightly hidden by the straps themselves some deep muscle striations that you can still see costume wrinkles and seam lines nice sculpt to the bracer or well i guess the forearm brace armor whatever the crotch and the belt assembly is a floating piece there's a bigger pouch sculpted on the back and then the belt coming around is actually articulated to come out and around and get out of the way of leg movement of crunching whatever i like the red deadpool symbol catches your eye out of all this gray and black straps going around the legs like it showed in the instructions the pouches are separate that pin in knee pad does move with the lower shin that's one of my pet peeves with Amazing Yamaguchi. Sometimes they articulate this where you can snap it back and cover the gap. And sometimes it sticks out like a spike. The shin armor goes from there all the way down to the foot, but it's actually a boot in between. So I guess that's separate plate. This is part of the boot. It's in a spot where we're not used to seeing a, a human body move but it works in the overall articulation scheme when you're doing a full on pose. Pat on top of the boot, some sole way on bottom there's even a deadpool symbol down there that design work with those buckles whatever they are sticking on the front of the costume design that works up to there and then there's deadpool got the piece sticking off the back kind of trademark deadpool at this point black around the eyes the red jumping out at you like down here oh forgot to point out that the left leg different set of straps and then the one or well the set i guess in the back that's the removable one as we've been looking at it you're probably thinking i'm thinking too it looks gangly looks odd when you get it down and move it around 
which I have noticed on this figure so far, a bit more intuitive than we've seen in the past. I don't know what this pose is. Maybe he's... <laughs> Still a frustration level. I don't think they'll ever get away from that because of crazy, insane poses. But their constant experimenting pays off in the long run whenever they, you know, sell you a second version of the same figure you've already got. Engineering, I like that they've moved away from, and, and I know their bread and butter is Revel Tech joints, but they've moved away from those in some places. On version one, it was all Revel Tech joints all day in the neck, double in the shoulders elbows, knees. Look at that. Look how much they stick out. At the time, because of the poses I got it into, I was like, yeah, this is fantastic. This is amazing. But the more you mess with it over the years, the more you think... The new one has kept some Revel Tech joints. I mean, it's obvious at the shoulders and then at the top of the elbow. There's one down here at the ankle. Everything else is hinge and swivel and there's actually dumbbell in the neck upper and lower. So not only does that make for a smoother, cleaner silhouette, it makes it easier to pose. I know, I know, but it does. I'm having more fun with this is what I think I'm trying to say. Going over that articulation, up at the top of the neck, there is actually a dumbbell and there's the cover piece so it doesn't break up because of the crazy movement you get up here. That goes up into there when you look all the way up. No down up there. That falls on the dumbbell joint at the lower neck that goes all the way. There's also a little tilt up there, but down at the bottom is where you get all the tilt. And of course that allows it to look side to side. There is a pin down here on this joint that allows the whole shoulder assembly to move forward, to move back. Then a Revel Tech joint pinned into there. Rotation all the way around. Hinges out <laughs> all the way up to there. There's also a ball joint going out there that gives you even more movement forward and back and around, as well as more rotation. There's a swivel on the outside of that. Revel Tech joint sticking out of here with a ball joint going into the lower arm. You get some movement there and then the rest of it all the way, along with some rotation there, and then some twist. Rebel Tech joint at the wrist allows for rotation, and you can bring it around and up and down in any direction you wanna go. I'm assuming there's a dumbbell joint in here. That's very tight, but you can get some hula hoop at the mid torso, ball joint at the waist. Together, so much crunch. He even came into frame. Hey! Back, not as much. The belts are on a Revel Tech joint in the back. Come up and around and out and over. And hips, not quite sure what is going on under there, but you can rotate forward, back, and then out. At first, it's not much, but if you rotate around and rotate the thigh swivel, you can bring it all the way out. Hinge at the knee, which is another one you'd think, oh, well, that doesn't give much. I want a double hinge or triple Revel Tech or something, but watch this. It goes all the way up. Not a problem kicking his Deadpool ass. I was gonna say dumbbell, but it's a Revel Tech joint at the top of the boot. So it hinges forward and back, but it acts like it wants to go side to side too. Maybe it's a Revel Tech joint with a ball joint going down. And then a Revel Tech at the ankle that allows for all the way back and some nice forward. Oh, and it's a ball joint going into the foot too. All kinds of tilt. And then finally, toe joint goes all the way up. Getting to accessories, this is where the frustration set in. For hands, there are two fists. There are two splayed out hands. There's two thumbs up hands. There's two side wielding hands. There's two trigger finger hands. Of course, it's Deadpool. Then there's a left and right that are specifically made to scroll through a cell phone. But good grief did they make this a pain in the ass. I've got the trigger finger hands on here and these may stay here for the rest of this figure's existence. The hands are so tight. That's why they give you extra pegs for when you pull them out and they're just stuck in the hand. I mean, I can get that out of there, but why if I have those extra joints? I might as well leave that there and hope <laughs> that I can just swap it out with the joint. There's also this ring that floats that hides the articulation, which I appreciate, but as tight as these are, you go to pull them and <sighs> carpet monster. Then for head options, there's the head that came on it. It's pretty normal. There's also a head sculpted to look like the mouth is wide open. There's a face that you can see a smile faintly underneath. And then another head with a half smile. On top of it being tight too, there's this point right here. That if you get your finger on, it just stabs the shit out of you. So you gotta kind of work it around, turn it sideways, and hope that it pops off. Because the first time I did it, the whole neck assembly came off, which is just a ball joint 
but still. Then you have to swap this neck cover piece out, which likes to stay inside, to make sure you put that the right way. That is the wrong way. The smooth curve goes up. Like the hands, the other heads, also a nightmare to put back on. This one's gonna be your forever head. God damn it, if I can get that on there. Well, it's tight on top of being a dumbbell up there, and a dumbbell down there. So it's also doing this the whole time. <laughs> you can't get me. There's also swappable eye pieces. There's a set of semi-angry eyes. There's a set of angrier eyes. There's a set of normal eyes. There's a set of wide open eyes. There's a set of eyes that look like they're smiling. Then there's the heart eyes that you can use for all kinds of fun and games. And the paint job on some of these are terrible bleeding out from the eye and you notice the neutral eyes. Ooh, just miss completely. And just like the hands, just like the neck, the eyes are also tight as hell. This plastic tool they gave you that flexes a little, it's fairly useless to get these out. I've been using a flathead screwdriver and just prying. It gets to there and then you pull on this side. Getting to all the weapons, there's the size. I like the purple down at the handle. There's not a lot of flex to these. The first time I put it in, I tried to go here. It just did not want to go. There's several different ways to do it. You can press it between the thumb and the fingers and then try to Get it around in there. These are probably staying in here. Can also use them in the grip hands if you want. There's two sets of blasters, one larger, one smaller, kind of sci-fi, not realistic. I don't know if that was a choice handed down to them or if that was what they decided to go with. Big blasters go nicely into the hand and it stays tight fit. The smaller blasters don't really work. You can't get the trigger finger behind the guard, kind of. Yep, but notice the hole. These are essentially just cosmetic as far as I can tell. There's the holster, which I haven't seen this set up before. There's just a pin and you peg it through and the gun becomes holstered. You can remove this and just plug that in. Or you can plug it in here or there's holes in the back or here. But they gave me two of the same and the way the tray is cut, it's supposed to be that way, it looks like. If you put this holster on this side, you're drawing across the grips forward. On the other side, grips back. I'm guessing this is supposed to go here. If you want it like that, and then have a knife here or something else. Get two big knives that are just chipped all to hell, or maybe it's supposed to be that way. It hurts more when you stab them. This also goes in the trigger finger hand, tight grip. Two beautiful swords. I love the gold guard, the red on the wrap with the black and everything. Same kind of deal here though. They are both pegged in a way where the open sides are gonna face the same direction. Then there's this piece that plugs into the back where you take the sheath or the scabbard and plug into here and attempt to plug into here, but it's angled down. This is too thick for this one to be on top of it. But as you're messing around, it kind of works itself out. The sword's going fairly nicely and they're held. They stay in place. It's just a loose grip on the back. Also the handles are a little smaller than the guns and the knife we already looked at, so it's a loose fit in the trigger finger hand. There's two smaller knives along with sheaths for those. Kind of the same problem with the knife, but here, the guard, you can kind of use the trigger finger to hold it in there better, like this. This is a knife. Can't do that with the sword because of how much bigger that guard is. Well, no, you can get it in there. It looks odd, but it's way more secure. I don't know if that's correct swordsmanship, but I, I, whatever works. There's a stick of dynamite that's lit. Looks slightly cartoony, but it's Deadpool. It's not bad at all. And for whatever reason, that's a tight grip. <laughs> Yep. Like I talked about the hands being made specifically to hold a cell phone, it also comes with a cell phone. On one side there's a Deadpool sticker, and you can see the camera even, and then flip it over and he's text messaging with somebody. Heightwise Deadpool stands, oh, barely under six and a quarter, which comes out ever so slightly shorter than the Amazing Yamaguchi Deadpool version one. Here it is with the Amazing Yamaguchi Wolverine and Captain America. Here it is with the Marvel Legends X-Force Deadpool and the Mezco 112th Collective uh, one version of Deadpool. I could have swore I had X-Force, but I can't find it. So I'm sure as soon as I walk back in there, it'll be, hey, here I am. Then there's the Sentinel Fighting Armor Deadpool and the Medicom Mafex comic book Deadpool. There's an X-Force version of this coming out too. So at the end of the day, there is, well, damn it. There's still a frustration level here, which we all expected, I think. I, it's still Kyoto. It's still Amazing Yamaguchi. It's still Revel Tech. But instead of being the body itself, the articulation, this time around, it's 
the extras, the accessories. They've done a great job of getting to a point where the joints and the articulation is better integrated into the body. It doesn't look so ragdoll or marionette. But then they turned around and backslid a bit in other departments. But once I settled into what options I wanted to use, which accessories, the setup, uh, this goes here, that goes there, I became less stressed. Which makes sense because it's not me actually swapping things out. That is th where I want to take the figure and just throw it through a wall. So I guess it's more these and uh, some extra parts I'm never going to use on this figure and <laughs> some of you will feel it's worth all that trouble to get that pose th what you're looking for some of you won't and that's okay. Different toys for different people. It is a huge upgrade from the first version but I'm going to say mm, if you're just into toys you want to have some fun go ahead and pass this by. But if you're that kind of person that likes to do puzzles, to look at things and go, well, I could do this, or that's gonna go around here, this will do that for you. So in that aspect, go ahead and pick this up. I like it at the moment, but I'm gonna have to stew on it a couple days to keep messing around, or maybe make some sockets slightly larger, easier to swap. We'll see from there. If you enjoyed this roller coaster of a review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Even with this pose, if you look and move it to the right position, you're going to see gap up through there. Again, that's just a Kyoto standard. This line first came out, you could turn it like this and you were going to see all kinds of ugly ball joints and gaps. Okay, you get it with the elbow too when you turn it certain directions. Oh, and there's some at the leg too when you get deep hinge, but it is an improvement. They're, they're working their way up.